Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. This is part three of my three-part series on storage. In this episode, we're going to look at local storage, specifically the QNAP NAS for individuals and for teams. All right, let's go have a look at the beast that I'm connected to. Uh, this is the TVS H674 uh, in the series. Uh, we'll start on the side where there's lots of ventilation and on the back there are compartmentalized fans. They're independent, very uh, quiet and uh, cool. There's uh, PCIe Gen 4 slots where you can put in M.2 SSDs, GPUs, the uh, 10 or 25 gig E uh, expansion slots, the same for the bottom. Lots of expansion in this unit. There's an HDMI port where you can plug in a monitor and completely view everything inside uh, that's going on with the NAS. Two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, and below that, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports at uh, 10 gigabits per second speed. Again, more ventilation in the side. On the front, there are six bays in the front and you can use three and a half inch or 2.5 SSDs. There's lots of status LEDs and an LCD panel with controls, the power switch, and one copy, one touch copy USB um, port. And in this particular one, I have four 10 uh, terabyte drives stuck in here. And you might ask, uh, well, there's, it takes six. How come you only got four, Colin? That's all I could afford. Yeah, YouTube doesn't make a lot of money. Anyway, I've got four. I could expand that if I want. So when we boot this up, you can see it's it's booting up. I've sped this up quite a bit. It does take a couple minutes uh, to boot up, uh, but once it starts and it loads, uh, the mounts the volume, loads all the drivers, everything, uh, all the services that start up. And I called mine Big Six, even though I only have four drives in there right now. <laughs> but I'm calling it Big Six. And from here, you can uh, access the uh, IP addresses of both of the uh, adapters. And this, it, the time I recorded this, I didn't have both uh, connected. And there's the model. So there's the LAN status, USB status, if it was connected. And uh, I'm connecting this to the QNAP switch. This is a 10 gigabit and 2.5 gigabit switch. Um, that if you've got 10 gig E, you can connect to it directly. But I don't happen to have 10 gig E on my Dell Precision uh, mobile workstation, but I do have Thunderbolt 4. So QNAP has an adapter, and this adapter will convert uh, Thunderbolt 3 and 4 to 10 gig E. And all you have to do is plug that in. It powers itself. And then you plug in a CAT5 or CAT6 for 10 gig E, and you're off to the races. Now I have Thunderbolt over Ethernet. Now, when I set this up, I use the smart installation. It's pretty simple. It takes you through the steps, either an automatic or a static IP address. And uh, you put in the name of the NAS, uh, username, password, and it starts to install everything. It creates the RAID of your choice. And before you know it, you are all set up. And then you go to NAS management and log in. It's that simple. All right, I want to just go through a little bit about who QNAP is and why did I choose them and what has this got to do with the video world? Well, they're big in the video world. First of all, one of the reasons is you get to work with your favorite video editing software. So all of the same software is going to work with all of the QNAP solutions. Here are three different scenarios. Here's collaboration. This is not the system I'm running right now, but it does show you a very ideal uh, situation for 10 um, or more people, multiple workstations connecting. You can also use this if you're an onset uh, DIT and you can convert using something called the Thunderbolt 4 All Flash NAS book. And in this scenario, your um, 
uh, rendering new files, uploading them. And when you're uploading them, uh, they show up on the NAS and they're now available to editors immediately. Or in a situation like mine, it's personal storage and I'm connected through 2.5 gig E, and here I'm using this as my main storage, but you can use this in a collaborative environment. And who are they? Well, QNAP is used in TV and film production around the world. Um, they're used by lots of mission critical solutions, animation companies, small studios and solo artists. I'll put all these links in the description. Um, I also wanted to show you one of their most popular NASs, and that's the 1288. This thing is a mega beast, and it has optional uh, Thunderbolt 3 connectivity. You can add three, four Thunderbolt 3 connections, and you can see all those drive bays. So this is typically used in a workstation, a work group uh, type solution. But then I wanted to show you the other end and how diverse our QNAP system. Well, check this out. This is their mega massive solution that allows up to 4,096 users. Yeah, so QNAP is huge, okay? They don't fool around. Rock solid, that's why I was so excited to work with them. Video really bashes hardware. Video requires a lot from everything, from switches to um, the NASs, servers, all of this stuff, and that's what QNAP gives you. So let me get out of this, and I'm going to uh, run speed test, and I've already run it once, so I'll run it again. And this is over 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. This is not 10. So if I was connected via 10, which if I had an expansion card in the NAS, I could connect to a 10 gig E, it would be around a thousand. Um, I'm going to get some pretty good results for working over this. You can see I'm able to um, work with 4K, uh, 60 frames um, in Blackmagic RAW. ProRes and uh, H.265, writing the files and reading the files. It's going to pop up in a second. And there we go. So, huge amount of power. Um, this is not connected on my machine. This is now, well, it's beside me on the table here, but it is connected through that Thunderbolt connection that I had. So that's Thunderbolt over 2.5 gig E. So let's open up uh, Premiere Pro, and I have this, I have this project here uh, open, and I'm going to hit play, and this is 4K um, playing back, and you can see I haven't dropped any frames, and it's playing very nicely. It scrubs like butter. So I also want to show sharing a project. So if we were going to uh, have multiple people in here uh, connected to my NAS, it, it doesn't make sense to have a local project because then who's got it open, who owns it, you don't want people overriding it. So it makes more sense to create team projects and you can do that right in the edit menu. Go to the edit menu, team project, convert this to a team project. And here you can add as many collaborators as you want. You can set where the scratch disks are. Um, all of these are the same as a regular project setting. But once I share that, um, one little thing that I find um, always trips me up is it doesn't really convert this project. It duplicates the project and then puts it on Adobe's cloud. So you end up with the same project, the exact same name, open at the same time. You just got to remember to close the local one. Now I have uh, saved one uh, yesterday. I'm going to open that up now. The media for that is on the NAS, but the project is in the cloud. All right, so let me close this project. And there it is. And how do I know it's a team project? Because over on the right, it's showing up as a team project. Open it up, there it is. And if I right click and choose reveal and explore or the finder, you can see it's on my big six. So, uh, Abby, who's uh, 
a great engineer over at Adobe. Um, he's on the Pacific uh, coast uh, down in San Francisco. I'm up here just outside of Toronto. I asked him if he would make some changes and I invited him to this so that I could get my update button showing. I needed to have a second editor somewhere in the world open this up. So you can see he's actually connected to this online right now. And the update button is showing because this is not up to date. I also have an update available here. Again, it's not changing the media. That's the important thing that when you move to Teams, you have to understand is the, te the project file, which is relatively small, that's on Adobe servers. Anybody can get that anywhere. Well, how do you get the media? Well, here's one example, which is local media. It's important to understand that Abi is not connected to my NAS. I asked him to make this change just so I could see, get an update button to show you what it's like working with uh, a team project. Typically, he would be in the same building connected to the local storage. So I watch the timeline. I don't know what he did, but I'll click update. And oh, there we go. There's the update. Uh, he seems to have uh, moved my quote and maybe edited a few of these uh, clips for me. So now I know I've got the latest update. And if I changed any of this, so let's say that uh, I unlock my music and I think this is now going too long. It's gonna run the clip analysis on Remix. You see publish up here is available. So I'll publish that update. And in publishing that, I have an option to mention what I'm doing. I trimmed the music via Remix. So Abby would be notified that there's an update. And if he wanted to, he could go and see what I did with that update. So all of that media is here. Uh, well, right beside me here on my network, on my NAS, my QNAP NAS, and everything there is uh, uh, on the cloud. It can have a maximum of, get ready for this, 250 terabytes of uh, storage. And th this is, like the beginner NAS. This is like the entry level for a video uh, editing solution. You can add SSDs for caching in here, which is really great for video because you're constantly, if, if everyone's working on the same project and you're pulling data and it's, it's using the cache because it's the same clips that are, are uh, going over and over and over again. Now let's look at the NAS software. This is QUTS Hero, and the control panel has an enormous amount of uh, functionality. I'll go to my switches here, and I can see I'm connected on both of my switches. Um, if you jump up here to the dashboard, this pops out and gives you um, a lot of information on the speed, each one of the adapters, how fast things are going. It's, a, it's just a quick look that, that you can open up very quick. But if you wanted to, you could also open up the, the file station. Um, this is where I've created my surveillance and video revealed. All of the files here, they're all accessible. You mount them directly. You can mount them directly here. There's all of the files and work with them in Explorer or the Finder. Uh, so it's there's zero learning curve. Go down to the re resource monitor, and here we get a, a good look at all of our resources. This is an overview showing the CPU, memory, the processes, and uh, the network. If we wanted to jump to system resources and jump right to the network, we could see that storage uh, change resources. So lots of ways to look at this. In the app center, there are tons and tons of applications, including being able to run virtual machines, back up to popular drive solutions, uh, back up to Microsoft solutions. There's a complete surveillance system that supports tons and tons of cameras. 
There are also smartphone apps so I can get all of the same information anywhere in the world. I can connecting remotely to my NAS and I can see and turn on, look at all of the same resources. Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, apps that you can get for mobile, for iOS, and for um, uh, Android. There's search and notes, email, uh, music, video, photos, remote controls, entertainment, uh, photo taggers, surveillance. I love QNAP NASs. It's smart, powerful, easy to sell out, set up. Wicked fast, way faster than any other NAS solution I've ever come across, especially if you're connecting through 10 gig E. Like I said, if you, I'll put a link in the, in the description uh, where they're connecting at much faster than I am at two and a half uh, gig E, but it's still fast enough for me to, to uh, edit my show on. So thanks to the folks at uh, QNAP. I really do appreciate it. I thought this was a great, uh, Part to my storage series where I wanted to show something where you can use this for backing up for robust RAID 5, RAID uh, 1, uh, RAID 10, RAID 20. Oh, there's a lot of RAID uh, versions that they've got. Um, and that you can set it up, multiple people or one uh, person. Uh, you can be sharing stuff anywhere in the world. People could be connecting outside into this. You'd have to have, you know, pretty fast uh, internet connection to do that, but it is great. If you're not familiar with QNAP, look at all the, the links in the description, check it out. Um, if you're looking for a great NAS solution for backup or, or for a work group, they're a great place to go. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us more, you can do that on videorevealed.com slash shop, donate once or monthly like our wonderful donors. Thank you so much. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to wrap up this storage series and show you all of the cool things you can do with QNAP storage.